In this video, I would like to go over an example that I think is a really interesting application of the physics that we're learning about. Um, so let's say that you have a road where you want a car to be able to turn at some speed. Okay, so have a dotted line to indicate the center line of the road. So we're going to have a car that's undergoing some circular motion. So as it moves, it has a velocity, um, and it's going to have an acceleration towards the center because we have a centripetal motion. Okay, so the simplest way to do this is to just have the road literally be curved. And so if you look at a picture from behind the view, the car, so a rear view, then what this is going to look like is you have your car like this, um, and here are the tires on the road like this. Okay, so if you draw a free body diagram for the car, then what this is going to look like is you have a gravitational force on the car by the earth, a normal force on the car by the road, and the only force that can cause the centripetal acceleration is friction. So there's a friction force on the car by the road that allows it to turn the corner. Okay, um, well, having friction be an essential part of how your car works is a little bit unsafe because sometimes the road is slippery. So for instance, it could be icy or rainy or something, um, or there could be leaves on the road, any number of reasons that friction might not be reliable. And so a neat trick that you can do is you can do what's called a banked curve. And so if I draw a rear view for this, um, essentially what you do is you slope the road a little bit so that then when the car um, is on the road, like this, um, well, a free body diagram for the car is going to have the gravitational force is still the same. But now the normal force is going to be up and to the left. So normal force on the car by the road. Um, and this time you may not need any friction. So um, we could have the vertical component of the normal force canceling out the weight and there's still a horizontal component of the normal force that's causing the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so this is inherently safer because even if the road were extremely slippery, um, the car is still going to experience that normal force and it's still going to be able to make it around the curve. Okay, so if you pay attention to the way that um, like highway curves are designed, they have this sort of slope built in, which we call a banked curve. Um, another case where this is really obvious is if you watch, say, a NASCAR race, the um, track is very sloped around the curves to make it easier for cars to make those curves. Okay, so um, essentially what we want to do is figure out for a particular situation what angle of bank is appropriate in order to make the car move in the direction that we want. Okay, and that angle, you can check, is going to be the same as this angle. All right, so um, essentially what we want is the net force is going to be to the left because the acceleration is to the left. Okay, so um, unlike most situations where we have a slope involved, we're going to choose x and y. I'll do x is to the left and y is vertical here rather than parallel and perpendicular to the ramp. Okay. Um, and I'm choosing x to the left because that's the direction I want the acceleration to be. Okay, you're allowed to make those sorts of choices. All right. Okay, so we want to consider Newton's second law in each of the two directions. So in the y direction, a component of the normal force is going to be upwards. That's going to be the normal force on the car by the road times cosine theta. And that's going to be um, upwards while the weight is downwards. So the gravitational force on the car by the earth is downwards. Those are going to add up to the mass times acceleration in the y direction, but we're not expecting the car to accelerate in the y direction. That would mean it was lifting off the ground or um, sinking into the ground. So that acceleration is just going to be zero. What about in the x direction? Well, we have a normal force on the car by the road, um, but this time the horizontal component is going to be in the x direction. So that's going to be NCR sine theta. There's no other force in the y direction, so that's it. And that is going to equal mass times the acceleration in the x direction, which this time is not zero. That's going to depend on, for instance, the details of the curves. Okay. So um, solving the y equation, I have ncr cosine theta equals gce, okay, um, which is just going to be equal to mass of the car times gravity. Okay, so if I know the normal force, uh, or rather if I know the weight of the car and the angle, then I know the normal force. Okay, and then on um, the second equation, I have ncr sine theta equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. So like we've had before, I actually have two extremely similar uh, equations here. And so I'm actually just going to divide them in order to um, make this simple. So I'm going to take the second equation divided by the first. Okay, and if I do that, then on the left-hand side, I have NCR sine theta over NCR cosine theta. So sine over cosine is just tangent theta. On the right-hand side, I have MA over MG, so the masses cancel. And so I'm going to have acceleration in the x direction over G. Okay, so that's a really simple relationship. We can find the um, angle that the road should be sloped at if we know what acceleration we want the car to have. It's actually kind of amazing that the mass of the car doesn't play into this. So the same slope of the road is going to be safe for a huge heavy truck as for a tiny little plastic you know, um, car. The, the mass of the car totally cancels out in this process. Okay, so let's plug in some numbers. Um, let's say that the radius of the curve um, is equal to, oh, I don't know, 100 meters. And let's say that the speed that we want the car to be going is um, 25 meters per second. That's about 55 miles an hour. Um, and then let's see what we come up with. Okay, so remember that the acceleration for centripetal motion is V squared over R. This is an equation that keeps coming back. It's a good one to remember. And so that acceleration, if we calculate that, is going to be 25 meters per second squared over 100 meters. So 25 squared is 625. So this is going to come out to 6.25 meters per second squared. 
Okay. Um, G is 10 meters per second squared. And so if I plug these numbers in, then I'm going to get 6.25 meters per second squared over 10 meters per second squared, um, which is 0 0.625. And then if I solve for um, theta, which I plugged into a calculator earlier, this is going to come out to 32 degrees. So it's actually a pretty significant um, slope to this road for what is in some ways a really modest curve. So 100 meters, I think, seems like a reasonable radius um, and 25 meters per second seems like a reasonable highway speed. Um, if you decided that that was too much of a slope, then what you would want to do is say, all right, well, maybe I want the slope to be 10 degrees instead of um, 32 degrees. You could either change the speed limit to make the speed limit a lot slower, or you could make the radius much larger so that the, the curve is much more gentle going around the highway. That's probably what would happen in real life. If there was space to make the, the curve much bigger, that's what you would do so that you could have a gentle enough slope, but still um, have a reasonable highway speed. But sometimes that's not possible. And that's why sometimes there are sections of a highway where there's a much lower speed that you're allowed to drive.